Hey guys, and welcome back. Today we are going to be continuing on the planning part of our portfolio journey, moving from finance plan to the time plan syllabus dot point. We're going to be breaking up the time plans into two sections, the action plan and the Gantt chart. Both are tools which can be used to stay on track to finishing your project and portfolio before the due date, which is easier said than done. We'll be going over what they are and how to write and format them over the next two videos. So in this video, we're going to go over what an action plan and Gantt chart are, and then we'll move on to how they are linked. Then we'll get into making portfolio progress with writing an action plan and finishing off the video by answering the age old question of every DT student. Why does everyone dread creating a Gantt chart? This will leave us in good stead to create the Gantt chart in the next video, so let's get to it. What an action plan and Gantt chart are. Before we get started in making both of these parts of the portfolio, we must form a basis of understanding of what they both are. As always, getting into the mindset before we start a page. So the first item on our list is the action plan. The action plan is kind of like a to-do list. You don't put dates, deadlines and time frames on it. You just simply write out a list of all the things you are going to do. So yes, this is pretty much like the contents page where we wrote out what is in the portfolio, but this time no page numbers and a bit more detail. We'll get more into this when we write up our action plan, but for now I'm just trying to communicate what it is and how it's kind of like a to-do list of sorts. Now, the Gantt chart is a time plan. This is where you plan your dates, deadlines, and their relationship to each individual task. Now, if you Google Gantt charts, you might find that they look like timelines, but with DT Gantt charts, it's not just a record of how long each event should take. As per usual, we need to justify each task and why it took us the length of time it took. I know, justifications are never ending, but remember back to the introduction video where we talked about the purpose of a portfolio, to tell the marker why, and this is going to be part of the Gantt chart we'll be making in the next video. So now that we understand what both of these components are, let's move on to understanding how they are linked. The connection is pretty straightforward. We are going to be taking all the components from the action plan and placing them on the Gantt chart to form our time plan. As I said, this is a step-by-step -step guide, so we are going step-by-step -step from the action plan to the Gantt chart. These pages work hand-in-hand -hand to form the basis of our time plan. Okay, let's not waste any time. I think we're all on the same page, so let's get started. Writing an action plan. Now, I promised that things would settle down a bit after we made that huge areas of investigations page and this is exactly where you can take it a bit easy. All those titles in your contents? Well, they are almost exactly the same as all the titles you need for your action plan. So yes, the easiest thing to do is to practically copy your contents table and paste it under an action plan heading. I know it kind of seems like a cheat's way out, but I promise we'll be elaborating on this version. The contents table will just form the skeleton for our action plan. Now that we have our skeleton, Let's break down what kind of details we need to add or get rid of. So obviously we don't want a list of page numbers, so let's get rid of them here. Now, as I said, this was like a checklist. So if we had this table as our to-do list, I think it would be pretty unhelpful. I mean, it's just a list of fairly vague page headings. So the kind of detail we'll be adding is breaking down these page headings into a list of things that we'll be doing on each page. Let's say we're making a series of lights that are in the shape of pool table balls, because there just aren't enough lighting options for the market of pool table pros. Yes, it's a niche market, but people design some pretty crazy stuff, so why not? So if we were writing an action plan for this, let's look at a few different components on this action plan and list how we would break them down. Let's look at two random components on the list, design sketches and experimentation with materials. In these two examples, I'm just going to try it and give you an idea of how to break down the items of this list. So in design sketches, 
you might list pull ball designs, wiring planning, composition and display options. And for experimentation with materials, you might list different lamp colours and shapes, exterior material, hanging wire, colours, composition, style and battery power for display. Now, I'm not going to be unreasonable and say that every single item on our action plan list needs this level of additional detail. For example, we've all written our design briefs now. How would we break that down? It's only a couple of sentences. So that item on the list wouldn't need the details we are adding. You could leave it as it is. But really try to construct a personal to-do list for as many important components as you can, like I have in these examples. And that's it. That's all we're going to do for this practical part of the video. But before we move on, I just want to prepare you for what's coming next. Let's just talk about this age old question before we dive into the next video. Why does everyone dread creating a Gantt chart? Okay, so the Gantt chart is a massive table where you need to merge lots of different rows and columns to correctly display the time plan and the justifications you need with it. This table will be massive, probably run over two pages, and you may face a lot of challenges in making it. But trust me, for this reason, you will feel extremely satisfied when you're finished creating it. I'm not trying to scare you off too much, just giving you a bit of warning. Winter is coming. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. Now that we understand what an action plan and Gantt chart are and how they are linked, We've written up our action plan with the little to-do list style details we need. And we are mentally ready to tackle the Gantt chart. I know this video was smooth sailing, but you do deserve a bit of a break. It's been pretty heavy work lately, and it's just about to get a whole lot heavier. So catch me in the next video where we'll be finishing off the time plan syllabus dot point with the dreaded Gantt chart. See you soon.